Welcome, everyone. Um, this is a crash course on uh, linear algebra. And in fact, we're going to be covering the core essentials needed for optimization theory. And today, we'll be going to the next level, which will be about matrix calculus. Um, so let's begin by saying, once again, we have some vector, which I'll call x. And let's just say that x is just an R2, just out of simplicity. So that just means that x is equal to x1, x2. And a nerdy way of saying that is x is within R2, like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce some function of x, so f of x. And really, this is just a, a nerdy way of saying that f is a function of x1 and x2. And let's say that f maps from r2 to r1. So in other words, we can say that f maps from r2 to r1. And what this is is really this is a nerdy way of saying that we have a two-dimensional input, right? We have x1 and x2, so two-dimensional input. But let's say we only have a one-dimensional output. An example of this, in case you don't like the abstract mathematics, an example of this could be f of x1, x2 is equal to, I don't know, uh, any, anything we like. Uh, let's say sine of x1 plus x2 squared times x1 plus the square root of cosine x1, x2, for example. I don't know, whatever. Um, the point is, is that this is a one-dimensional output, even though it's a two-dimensional input. So we're saying f maps from R2 to R1. OK. Now, why do I bring this up? It's because often in the case of uh, optimization theory, we're interested in finding a minimum of some function, f. And to do that, we'll typically need information, or we can need information, about the gradient of f. So let me talk about what's called the gradient of f. This is known as the gradient. Gradient of f. And it is defined as, grad f is defined as the partial derivative of f with respect to its first variable, x1, and then the partial derivative of f with respect to its second variable, x2. Now I want to pause here and say that in some uh, textbooks, the gradient is actually defined as a row vector instead of a column vector. But in the field of optimization theory, by convention, we define the gradient as a column like this. So we're going to be using column notation here. But be in mind that different industries or different fields of mathematics, they sometimes define the gradient of f as a column. But in this case, we're keeping the convention to be a, uh, a nice, neat column like this. OK. Um, so let's cover a few examples. Why not? Let's, let's cover an example. Let's do uh, example one. Let's say that we have f of x given by c transpose x, like this, where this c is just a, uh, is just a constant vector. Let's call it c1, c2, right? where c1 and c2 are constants. Let's expand this out. This is going to be c1, c2 times x1, x2. And if we do the matrix multiplication, that'll be c1, x1 plus c2, x2. So we've got a nice linear function here, which is very lovely. And let's see if we can find the gradient of f using the definition we've got here. Well, if I were to take the partial derivative of this with respect to x1, then this will just be c1. And if I were to take the partial derivative of f with respect to x2, that would just be c2. And so we can say that this is actually just your c vector that you started with. That's one useful identity here. Oh, and by the way, I've, I've, so far I'm clearly showing examples with x is equal to r2. But really, this, this generalizes to x in rn, by the way. So uh, uh, this is more out of simplicity, but realize that this generalizes. OK, so that's a useful identity. Um, let's cover another one. Let's do a different example. Let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let's say we've got a quadratic form. Let's say that f is equal to, um, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it consistent, f of x is equal to a half times by x transpose ax, where a is some square 2 by 2 matrix. Let's call it a11, a12, a21, 
A22 like this. Now, in this case, uh, we, could, we could even write it out. Um, this is going to be a half times by x1, x2, times by this beast of a matrix I just wrote out, a11, a12, a21, a22. And then we've got our x matrix, uh, x vector again, x1, x2. Now, I won't bother expanding this out. But if you did expand this all out, you would actually just end up with a scalar which is quite interesting. So don't be confused. This actually expands out into a scalar. And if I were to take the gradient of that scalar, so the gradient of f, I'll make a separate video proving this because it's a little bit laborious. But if I were to uh, find the gradient of f here, that would just be a half times by a plus a transpose times by x. Now, what's interesting is that in the case that A is symmetric, then this will be A plus A, which will be 2A, and that will cancel off with a half. And so we'll be left with this whole thing will be equal to A times by X if A is symmetric. And what do I mean by symmetric? We've covered it before. That means A is equal to its transpose. So this is a very useful identity here. And so let me uh, uh, summarize everything all together that we've covered in this nice little quick video. Let's cover a third example. It's really a combination of the first two. Let's do example three. Let's say we had some function f, which is going to be a half times by x transpose ax plus c transpose x plus some constant, I'll just call d, where d is just some scalar constant, then if I were to find the gradient of f, then that would just be equal to, as we've shown here, ax, assuming a is symmetric. We'll be covering uh, nuances about this in the second video. Um, plus c, and then, of course, if we differentiate d, it goes to 0. So we're just left with this. And this is quite useful. So we found a way to differentiate some quadratic um, uh, form like this, which is lovely. And the reason why we're covering this and why this is so essential for optimization theory is because often in optimization theory, we care about minimizing quadratic forms like this. So that gives some justification, and this is some fundamental uh, algebra properties. OK, see you in the next video.